The clock is ticking on Alan Treadwell's Big Sky Muley Hunt with Central Montana Outfitters. But the high rack shooters he's looking for just aren't cooperating. That's a pretty average buck right there. I feel like we can do better. Yeah, it's a pretty nice deer, but I feel like the one we passed this morning is probably a little bit better. Fortunately for Alan, this ranch is ideal for hunting all day long. One of the things that I love about hunting this ranch is this an all day hunt. You can see so well, you can go over to one ridge and glass back over to the other ridge, really spend a lot of time in binoculars and pick some areas apart and you can find a lot of deer. Soon enough, ranch owner Dale Yonkin spots a buck that Alan might want to take a shot at. The wind's quartering, I mean, right to him. Just, it's, it's just quartering just past him, and I think we're gonna be all right. And once we get up there, we start looking, and there's a, there's a couple of does over there. The big buck's nowhere to be found, and then look up, and you can catch him just coming out the backside down there about a 1,000 yards. Is that him coming out that backside? Yeah. He must have been high enough that he caught our wind or something and got out of there before we got back. I'm sure he had caught our wind because he, is, he was bedded higher up on the mountain. He caught a, little, caught a little whiff, knew something wasn't right, and he elected to escape out the backside and get out of there, leaving the small buck and the does behind. That's the escape route for sure, see? Yep, headed the same direction. Yep. That's the reason those big boys get big. You know, they don't stick around to ask questions where a smaller, younger animal uh, will say, hey, I think something smells funny. I don't know really what's going on. And they'll stick around to find out what's going on. Those big boys, they catch a whiff, they're gone and won't give you a chance. I guess that sorry sucker must have winded us. He was a little higher up on the mountain than Mother too. I don't know if he if he caught our wind or caught you up here or something when you spotted him. You're not gonna make every stock work. Something's gonna go wrong, you know, part of the time. So the more at-bats you have, the more time you spend out there, the more stocks you make, the closer you are to being successful. And that's what we're doing. We're out there, we're working hard, we're seeing deer, we're passing up bucks. Um, you know, we're slipping in on a buck we think we could kill and he's winning this and leaving. And everything's, you know, kind of going to plan, really. It's just a matter of time before it's all gonna come together. Meanwhile, a nice variety of wildlife keeps Alan and Dale alert and optimistic. There's a real nice antelope buck right down here. <laughs> With a couple of does. You talk about a game-rich environment, you really never know what you're gonna come across. And, you know, we were one day sitting there looking at a real nice buck bedded down and catch this antelope coming down the bottom with a couple of does. And I'll tell you what, if I could have traded in my buck tag for, a, for an antelope buck tag, I'd have done it in a heartbeat. You know, that's the thing about it, you just never know. You know, I worked over this ridge thinking I might see a good muley down there and ran into an exceptional antelope buck down there with a couple of does. Made me wish I was out here a month or so ago with the antelope tag in my pocket. With time dwindling fast on this hunt, Alan's feeling a few regrets. You know, it's getting late in the hunt. We've had several at bats. I've passed some really good deer, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Now we're going to have to get creative and look at some places that we haven't thought to look. And Dale says, I got the perfect place. He said, it's down in the bottom. There's no way to get in there. You're going to have to glass it from a mile away. A typical setup on this ranch is to spot them from far off and be able to get around them. And, uh, just get in on them like that. So we come up and we're sitting up on this knoll, glassing up in this bottom, seeing a few deer and Dale goes, hey, I got a buck. I got one up there by that clay bank, just off that pinnacle. I start looking, I get the, get the spot and scope and I look and I'm like, Dale, that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good buck. Oh yeah, he's at least a four by four. He's got forks and some pretty good fronts. Look in there and see what you think. He looks in the spotting scope and he's like, hey, I think we need to get closer to this guy and take a look at him. Yeah, it's a nice buck, Alan. I think we need to give him a try. Dale knew that we could get around the backside of this, this buck and come over this face that he, was, that he was laying on and be right over the top of him at 50 yards. That was the plan. All right, let's well, go. We can give it a try. Good spot, bud. Time's running out for host Alan Treadwell, and he's starting to second guess himself a bit. You know, it's getting late in the hunt. We've had several at bats. I've passed some really good deer, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried. A little crunch time glassing turns up a big buck a mile off, and the final stalk is on. Yeah, it's a nice buck, Alan. I think we need to give him a try. Dale knew that we could get around the backside of this, 
this buck and come over this space that he was that he was laying on and be right over the top of him at 50 yards. We spotted the animal for a mile, mile and a half away. We were able to get around the back side of the animal. It was just a really good setup. So we come down this bottom and, and get real close and, and we're close to the edge and I get down and I start crawling up to the edge real slow because I want to crawl up there, peek over the edge, and if I can, then get Dale up. Within minutes, Alan locates the buck and starts waiting for a shot. And I look over and I catch horns out of the corner of my eye and he goes around this big mound in front of us. So I get Dale up there. Hey Dale, come on up. I see him go around the, the bottom down there. And we're starting looking. I think the buck's gonna come out the other side of it and he just doesn't come out. We lay there and we wait, wait for him to come out. We wait for him to come out. We never see the deer. We're 30 minutes into it and then we're 45 minutes into it. And now I'm starting to second guess myself. And all of a sudden the wind shifted just a little bit and I felt it hit me in the back of the neck and deer started standing up below us. Right there, right there, coming up that other hillside. There he is. We'd laid there so long that uh, we were ready for something to happen. And, and when that buck come out, you know, we were on top of it. I had the gun on the pack, ready for the shot. You got a range on him? I got him at 250. I think when he turns, you can take him. In my mind, it seemed like 10 minutes that deer is standing there looking straight away. I'm thinking, is he going to bolt? Is the first move he's going to do to run? Is he going to turn and give me a shot? Very he turning. He's turning broadside now. And he just starts to turn real slow. And as soon as he turns back broadside, I've already got pressure on the trigger. All right, I'm going to take him. Okay, take him, I'm ready. Here we go. Nice <laughs> shot, Alan. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. <laughs> as soon as that gun cracked, down he went. Oh, I pulled back, what a wait. <laughs> We passed a couple of really, really nice up and comers. Yeah. What I like about this buck right here is I could tell he was an older buck. You know, he had that, yeah. that big block of body. That was a good shot. Jumped him, didn't it? He didn't twitch. Yeah. But as soon as he went down, the realization set in that uh, we got a little bit of work ahead of us. You told me two days ago, he said, you know what, you're going to kill one in the nasty spot. I just got a feeling. I look at Dale and I go, I really want to go see my buck, but I don't want to climb down there twice. I said, why don't we go back, get the pack frames, go back down after him, and get down there one time. Well, it's been all fun and games at this point, but I'm pretty sure the work is about to begin, my friend. <laughs> after leaving their gear at the ram, Alan and Dale head back armed with only knives and pack frames. Oh, heck yeah. That's a <laughs> nice deer, Alan. And that was the one thing about this buck that stuck out in my mind when I seen him. He was in a different age class. His body size was different than, different than the other deer that we were seeing. You know, this was a mature deer. I let that uh, old Model 70 do a little talking. Yeah, he never knew we were, we were in the country. It's, it's easy to, to start thinking that I'm out here for horns and horns only. And I'm not, you know, I take care of these animals. That's what I live on. Me and my family live on the animals that I kill. That's another good thing about hunting with Alan all the time is he's into the management end of things. 180 grain Winchester ballistic tip buried in the opposite skin. You know, I shot a 180 grain Winchester ballistic silver tip. It's designed to do exactly what it did. 